Hi, welcome to the program, Faith for Every Nation. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'm Pastor Mark and Trina's daughter, and we are just so honored that you're joining us for the program today where my parents are talking about faith. I know you're gonna be strengthened. I know you're gonna be encouraged. Don't go anywhere. Wait right there and come back at the end, and I'm gonna tell you how to get a free gift. Now, let's get right into the Word. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. But when the centurion said, speak the word only, Jesus said, wow, he marveled. He said, I hadn't found this kind of faith in the whole nation. <laughs> so, so it's amazing what impressed Jesus. So in Luke chapter 5, if you found that, it says, uh, the, the word stood out to me. It says, when he saw their faith. When he saw their faith. When he saw their faith, which means faith has a voice. You can hear faith, but Jesus saw their faith. That means faith requires action. And here was Jesus standing right there. Son of God, he made the world everything. He could do anything if he had faith. And so when he saw their faith, they had just opened the door to the supernatural and all things were possible, right? And, and obviously, I think this, these four men who brought their friend on a, a stretcher or a something, you know, maybe a, a blanket or something, and they brought their friend who was paralyzed, and they brought him, and they couldn't get in the house. So obviously, they didn't have a, a reserved seat. And so, uh, and the house was full of uh, Pharisees, and it said doctors of the law. So these are some pretty smart people in this audience. And uh, while Jesus was teaching, they actually were criticizing him. So these are people who are well-versed in the scriptures. Yeah. But imagine Jesus teaching, and they're criticizing him. I believe they would criticize uh, Jesus if he walked into a lot of churches these days. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about how churches are segregated a lot, you know, like, yeah. you, know, you know, you have a church as a white church and a church as a black church. And then, you know, and so I heard the story years ago about an African-American brother, you know, that, that uh, went into a, a white church, so to speak. And they said, yeah, we, you know, you need to go over to your church and you can't come in our church. So he went outside and sat on the, uh, the porch of the church and he said, Lord, he said, um, what am I supposed to do? They won't let me in. And Jesus said, well, don't be upset. I hadn't been in there in years. <laughs> they won't let me in either. So, so, <laughs> so um, uh, Jesus, uh, while he was teaching, it says that doctors of the law and Pharisees came and filled the house. So they, they, um, the, these guys, he's trying to bring, they're trying to bring their paralyzed friend and there's no room, can't get in. They didn't have a reserved seat. Nobody said, uh, uh, I'll leave, let you have my seat. No. So these guys uh, did not know how to quit. So the so spirit of this faith won't quit. Is the spirit of faith. That's the spirit of faith. Yeah. They refused to quit. Mm -hmm. And so they got on top of the roof took their friend, so he said they, when he saw their faith, so you had four and then the one guy that was paralyzed. And so the guy that was paralyzed had to have faith because a lot of times people that are hurting um, and, and uh, broken, sick, they don't want to leave the house. No. Y'all heard any of this lately? I said, people don't want to leave the house. <laughs> right? And so it, it took faith on his part Right, and then the four guys they had, they wanted. So I call faith a team sport. Yeah. 
like that. Ah, and so it seems to me that there's some things and blessings we receive from God when we have our four crazy friends that will believe with us because faith is a team sport, and that's why there's some assembly required. Aha, uh -huh. come on. And there's a lot of things you can fellowship and receive from God at your house by yourself, but there's some things you only get with a corporate faith or uh, with your four crazy friends. Or in Acts chapter 4, it says they went to their own company. And so Dad Hagen said, you got to know your company and go to your company because when you lift your voice together, then there's power, a greater power, Amen. when you go to your company. Amen. Amen. You have agreement. Yeah. So you go to your company. So these four guys, <laughs> and it's kind of like people with a spirit of faith usually hang out together. <laughs> and so these four guys got their friend, and even though they were well, they refused to leave their friend sick. So the spirit of faith, come on, is going to help somebody else get in the presence of Jesus and receive their miracle or their healing or their blessing. Come on, how many believe you can help somebody else get, yes. in, get in the presence of the Lord? So when they got there, they couldn't get in, so they went up on top of the roof <laughs> <laughs> while Jesus was teaching. And you know, some teachers really hate to be disturbed while they're teaching. I mean, you might be looking at one, but people that are teaching, you know, that I... Like, so. Don't disturb me right now. Well, there's some I of your have sermons. I 14 points, and I'm going to do all of them. Yeah. Pastor Charles Cowan, I don't know if he's watching from Nashville, but oh, I was listening to him preach one time. He had about like 15 points or something. And he'd been going for an hour, and he'd only got to three. He said, well, I got 12 more points. I said, save some for tomorrow, Pastor. Save some for tomorrow. <laughs> so a lot of times people don't want to be interrupted but really, you don't really have to finish all your sermons. Actually, that's a good sign if you don't finish all of them. That means somebody heard the word, acted on the word, and started receiving from God. Right. And so in, in Acts chapter 10, it says, while Peter was preaching, right. the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. So the Holy Ghost and so Carnes, his whole family got filled with the Holy Ghost and interrupted Peter's sermon. <laughs> I guess Peter was okay with it, though. Well, uh, the Lord said to me, if the Holy Ghost never falls while you're teaching, he just don't like what you're saying. <laughs> he said, so if you'll figure out more what he's saying, then the power of God will start working in the middle of your teaching. <laughs> so while Jesus was teaching. It would be better than somebody waking the whole, or waking the whole church. What is it? I don't know. The what guy that was snor uh, the pastor. Uh, uh, the pastor, you know, the pastor had, uh, took his I wife. I <laughs> She, you know, she can never tell I a can joke. Never. I can almost read a joke. She can't even remember a joke. <laughs> but one of the main reasons we're married is she always laughed at my jokes. <laughs> and I like that one. She still laughs at them, right? So you heard about the pastor, you know, that he took his wife to the doctor. And the doctor said, well, what's the problem? And he said, well, it's my wife snoring. And the doctor said, well, does it bother you? He said, well, it bothers my whole church. <laughs> um, All right. <laughs> let's get back to the lesson. I've got several more spiritual. that go with that. Okay. But now I was telling somebody what my favorite jokes were that people don't laugh at. And different audiences, they just stare at you, you know. I said, one of my favorite ones is about the guy that was addicted to drinking brake fluid. And he said he could stop at any time. And some churches, they're just like, well, that's interesting. He stopped at any time. <laughs> All right, let's keep but going. But you know what, Mark? Isn't it great to be in this, co in this congregation, this yeah. company? And you have David cheering on the front row. David. And he's going to laugh at any joke you He say. laughs, man. He's, he's a professional laugher. <laughs> you know, laughter is actually good medicine. Amen. You know, so if you're laughing and people say, what's wrong with you? You say, I'm on medication. So <laughs> laughing is actually good for you. 
And it's really a part of the spirit of faith, right? That's right. Joy. So, all right. <laughs> now, let's finish this story. <laughs> While Jesus was teaching, it says the power of God was present to heal them. Imagine that the power of God was present to heal even Jesus' critics. In other words, it's the will of God even to heal people that are critical. And so the power of God was there to heal them, but none of them got healed. Who got healed? The man who had four crazy friends, and he went on top of the roof, knocked a hole in the roof and let their paralyzed friend down through the hole, so it's not a little hole. <laughs> so here you come, and, and so the owner of the house is going, well, I can't believe I let these people in my house. And so here comes a crippled man through the hole in the roof. So there was a process. I mean, Jesus was teaching, and then all of a sudden, you know, he starts hearing this racket up here. Yeah. Probably things start to fall on them. Yeah. Um, all the people started looking up. Hmm. So they caused a ruckus. Yeah. <laughs> I like it because it says uh, they let him down right in front of Jesus. So the house was full. Right. So I could imagine them getting on the roof and kind of walking it off like one, two. Because you don't want to let him down in the middle of the Pharisees. <laughs> He's like, the guy's like, ah! Because <laughs> religion don't do nothing and can get kind of mean. They're like, what are you doing there? <laughs> Interrupting my seminar. So <laughs> they measured it off and then they knocked a hole right there. They dug a hole, knocked a hole right there mm -hmm. and let him down right in front of Jesus. And Jesus must have seen him coming down. And the four crazy friends must have been kind of looking over the whole like, <laughs> Here comes the paralyzed man. And when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw their faith, there's something about faith when he saw their faith. And when he saw their faith means that the simplest definition of faith is to act like the Bible is true. So you can hear faith, but there's also the act of faith. Right. So how would you act? If you believed, how would you act? Because faith comes before Healing, our faith comes before salvation. Faith comes before victory. This is, it's our faith that gives substance to that. And so they were acting in faith without the feelings. Come on, so the simplest definition of faith is to act like the word of God is true. So the Lord said to me one time, he said, the moment you act on the word, God makes himself responsible for your results. Mm -hmm. He said, until you act on the word, you are responsible for your results. But the moment you act on the word of God, God watches his word to perform it. So faith is not just an act, it's an act on the word of God. Right. So you have revelation knowledge of the word, you believe and you act. You know, right. So they, to, these guys acted. We used to just try to drum up some faith somehow, some way, you know, play a fast song or something, you know, just make yourself, I think I have faith. But it's such a powerful truth when you realize faith comes by hearing and hearing mm -hmm. by the word of God. And you feed your faith and you, you uh, nurture your faith and water mm -hmm. your faith and then you act mm -hmm. on that faith. That's God speaking to you and wow. God's word is yeah. speaking to you. Yeah. And activates your faith. Mm -hmm. And so when he saw their faith, he said, now here's what happened. Jesus was teaching. Jesus was a teacher and a preacher and a healer. 
But he was a teacher and a preacher first because that's where faith comes from. Right. So T.L. Osborne said years ago, he said, many of you are waiting on me to quit teaching so you can get your healing. And I'm waiting on you to get your healing so I can quit teaching. All right, let's try that one more time. In other words, mm -hmm. just while you're hearing the word, he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So, so while Jesus was teaching, while he was teaching, so he was a teacher. And I love the teaching of Jesus because uh, Dad Hagen said, Jesus told him, he said, you know, most of my teaching was real simple. He said, if, matter of fact, he said, if you hear anybody teaching anything complicated, you know they didn't get it from me. <laughs> he said, because most of my teaching was very simple. And you study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Jesus was teaching very simple. Right. And the great thing about Jesus is he will just stick with you till you get it, even if you're a slow learner. He'll say it this way. He'll say yeah. it that way. He'll break it down. Yeah, Make and so toy. while he was I think he teaching, did that for you. He did it for me. He really <laughs> and he did. he still does it. And that's why he gave me a wife. That's right. Like you. <laughs> help it, try to help you. You are a great helper. You're an amazing woman, wonder woman, and we call you Super Nana. Well, I like your teaching. We almost changed the name of the church to St. Trinus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like your teaching. So Catholics would come. You know. Because it's so simple. <laughs> and because it's, it can be humorous, <laughs> and you get it. Did you hear about that, that the, Baptist, the Baptist that lived in the Catholic neighborhood? It's this Baptist lived in the all-Catholic neighborhood. And so on Friday, you know, the Catholics can only eat fish. But on Friday, this Baptist, he would always grill steaks, you know, and hamburgers and stuff. And the smell of that would come up through that Catholic neighborhood and just drive them crazy. So they said, we're going to have to get our friend converted. So they, they took him and said, you need to come to Catholic Church. Uh, and so, man, they got him to Catholic Church. And sure enough, he got converted. And the priest sprinkled him and said, you were born a Baptist. You were <laughs> raised a Baptist. But now you are a Catholic. <laughs> so the Catholic was so happy. And the next Friday, but they smelled those steaks cooking again on the grill on Friday. The next Friday, they thought, what in the world? We thought we got him converted. He's supposed to be eating fish. So they went over to his house, and he was standing over the barbecue grill, sprinkling those steaks. <laughs> and he said, you was born a cow. You was raised a cow. But now <laughs> you are a fish. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you agree my jokes are better than Mac Hammond's jokes? Mac Hammond's jokes, man. It's Mac Hammond, he's probably watching right now just getting sermon material. But Mac Hammond, <laughs> he's like, so Mac Hammond, <laughs> he's laughing. Mac <laughs> Hammond said, Lynn's first words in tongues were shop a lot. <laughs> So he said when he dies, he wants to be cremated and have his ashes sprinkled over the Mall of America. <laughs> that way he knows she'll visit him at least once a week. <laughs> All right, enough about Mac. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this passage of Scripture, <laughs> oh my. This passage of scripture, <laughs> I'm really laughing about several things at the same time. <laughs> you think I'm just laughing at the joke, but it usually triggers several other things. <laughs> so, <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth said that faith laughs at impossibilities. So, I want you to pick out a couple of things that look impossible right now. <laughs> Maybe somebody that's in your family. <laughs> Maybe somebody sitting next to you, but don't look at them. Come on, you may be thinking of a physical situation. You may be thinking of a financial situation. And just laugh at it right now. Go, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> oh, 
The devil's a liar. That's right. And the word of God is true. That's right. So ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. <laughs> We're talking about the spirit of faith. Yeah. And so Dad Hagen said he actually forced himself to laugh. He said, I just laughed because the devil said, uh, this time you're not going to get your healing. Right. He said, ha, ha, ha. That sounds <laughs> like devil, it was forced. <laughs> yeah. He said it was totally forced. And sometimes people, while you're doing that, say, I think that's just him doing that. <laughs> yeah. What was your first clue there, Smarty? Listen, <laughs> um, Dad Hagen said he forced himself to laugh. Ha, ha, ha. He said there was no anointing, no inspiration whatsoever because the devil kept attacking his mind with fear. Come on now. And so he said, the devil said, this time you're not going to get it. And so the devil will paint all kinds of pictures of your future that you're not going to get it. You won't get healed. Uh, your life's going to stay that way. And he just said, ha, ha, ha. He said, had no inspiration whatsoever. He just said, I forced myself. Ha, ha, ha. Some of y'all need to practice that. Ha, ha, ha. 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 <laughs> it's kind of a uni universal language, you know. It's like, even people right now in China are understanding me. They're like, I think he's laughing. So, ha, 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 ha. And so, laughter is a part of the spirit of faith. So Dad Hagen said, I laughed, ha, 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 and the devil kept coming to my mind saying, this time you're not going to get your healing or your miracle or whatever you're believing for. He said, that's why I'm laughing. I don't have to get it. Jesus got it for me 2,000 years ago, and I believe I have received it. Hallelujah. So I don't know what scripture you got in your mind right now, but I dare you just to go, ha, 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 He said, I just started counting it all joy and laughing, ha, 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 ha. Because the same God that delivered you last time will deliver you this time. Amen. And by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. And my God shall supply all of our need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Go ahead and laugh about that. Say, ha, ha, ha. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, he touches their mouth. One act of faith will open up the supernatural and cause the glory of God to come in. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you're connected to Jesus' victory. In this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, you'll learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. God has given every believer a measure of overcoming faith. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. It doesn't matter what you may be going through. Failure is not an option. With the three CD set, The Spirit of Faith is Tough, you'll learn to walk in victory every day. You'll also get the free book, Never Run at Your Giant With Your Mouth Shut. The Bible story of David and Goliath gives us a picture of how faith in God is released through faith-filled words. There is a miracle in your mouth. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call us at 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. You know, many times we complicate faith. We make it this big, hard thing. And, you know, I've had so many people come to me and say, man, I just, I, I wish I knew how to have faith. I wish I knew how to grow my faith. Or I wish I had faith like you. Well, you can. You know, faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So if you want to grow your faith, it's very, very simple. And, you know, that's what I like about this book. Faith opens the door to the supernatural. 
because it doesn't complicate faith. It makes it very simple. This is how you have faith. This is how you activate your faith. And now we move on to praise and thanksgiving and moving into the manifestation of the things that we're believing God for. It teaches us how to walk like faith would walk and how to talk like faith would talk and live like faith would live and how to get the answers that we are believing God for. This book will change your life. If you're believing God for something and you're in the middle of a fight, I encourage you to get this book. It will help you get the answers and it doesn't have to be hard. It's an easy thing. So I encourage you, if you want this book, the information is on the screen. You can call or go to the website. And we also have this free book for you today, Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. This is a fun book. It's an easy read. And you know what? I even have my kids read this book because it's not hard. It's not complicated. It tells about the story of David and running at your giant and keeping your mouth open, declaring the word of God and not giving up till you knock the giant's head off. This is a fun book. You need to get it for someone, even if they're not even saved and you, and you want to help them understand faith and help them understand their walk with God, get this book. You can get it for your kids. My kids read it and I'm like, they, they think it's pretty cool. They think it's pretty entertaining. So this is a fun book and it's free. The best gift you can get is a free, free gift, right? So I encourage you to get this book today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Again, my name's Alicia Hankins Moran, and we're so glad to have you. We hope to see you again. Kenneth E. Hagen said, in the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who have received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they are able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. Through the printed page, we are seeing an explosion of the reach the word is having around the world. Through your partnership, you are helping us to pass the necessary ammunition to believers around the world. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each project requires having the book translated, typeset, printed, and distributed. The initial cost for each project is approximately $5,000. Many partners and pastors have stepped up and sponsored one of the projects. Your world mission partnership of any amount makes a big difference. If you would like to sponsor one of the projects, there are many more nations to reach. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.